Hi, my name is Steven Zeman and I'm a clinical neuropsychologist here in Pensacola. Uh, the difference between clinical neuropsychology and counseling psychology is that a neuropsychologist is more focused on the diagnosis and assessment of brain related injuries, be it acquired or organic. On a typical day I see between four and five uh, new patients. Um, because I'm uh, focused primarily on assessment and diagnosis of uh, mental or um, neurobiological disorders, I don't do a lot of therapy. So the majority of my work day in and day out is meeting with new patients who are referred from uh, primary care physicians, neurologists, psychiatrists. Um, I have some pain management doctors who refer me patients to specifically look at uh, their, their patient's cognition and to see if there are any problem areas that may be interfering with their ability to follow a medical treatment regimen or other recommendations from other providers. Uh, traditionally, I spend about 75 to 90 minutes with each new patient because as a neuropsychologist, again, I'm focusing more on uh, the organic properties that are going on instead of just emotional difficulties. So there's a lot of chart review, there's a lot of record review, and I, I have a personal policy, and, and most neuropsychologists do as well, that I, I tend to not see an individual without a collateral informant because in dementia, for example, most people who are in the early phases of, phases of dementia aren't very good historians. And so I always need to rely on a spouse, a caregiver, um, in some cases a parent, uh, to provide me with additional details and other information of the problems that the patient has day in and day out. Um, a assessment of, of neuropsychological functioning is, is done through primarily paper and pencil testing and I don't spend a, a lot of time in counseling uh, except for, for a feedback session. So my typical new patient will come in and see me three times once for the diagnostic or clinical interview, uh, a second session to come in and actually have the evaluation done, and then the third time is for feedback of the test results. What does it mean? What does it not mean? What kind of recommendations am I making to them or to their family to help improve the quality of their life? On average, I come into the office at 9 a.m. and I finish my day around 5. I go home and generally have to work at night uh, as well, dictating reports and editing reports. I would say the most stressful part of my job is when I'm backlogged with a lot of feedbacks coming up and a lot of information to write up into a report. Um, otherwise, it's pretty typical stress level. Um, the only time I really get overwhelmed is when I get behind. In order to be qualified as a neuropsychologist, obviously you have to have a graduate degree, but it starts before then with your bachelor's degree. And I would recommend people get a general studies degree in psychology or biology if they're interested in this, in this line of work. Um, from there you go on to graduate school and part of the requirements nationally for uh, to call yourself a neuropsychologist is you have to meet specific education guidelines and in order to do that you have to go beyond your typical graduate degree and internship and you must do a two-year uh, postdoctoral fellowship specializing in clinical neuropsychology. I got my postdoc experience at the University of Virginia in the Department of Adult Neurology and uh, not and but you can get these kinds of experiences in lots of different areas throughout the United States. Um, some are housed in the Department of Psychiatry, some are housed in the Department of Internal Medicine. It really just depends on the institution or the graduate facility that you're attending and, and working in. So basically you have to have a, a PhD or a PsyD in clinical psychology 
and during that time you're going to include coursework that focuses uh, with a concentration in clinical neuropsychology. Uh, after that is internship and fellowship. Um, to be a good neuropsychologist, you have to be detail-oriented. You have to enjoy working with numbers. You have to understand statistics probably better than most doctoral trained uh, candidates because everything that you're doing is going to relate to how you take a raw score and how does it correlate to a standard score or a more uniform metric statistically. One of the best parts about being a neuropsychologist for me is that I'm often called on for uh, forensic work, which is related to the legal system and court matters. Um, lots of people don't like this because they don't like testifying, they don't like being on the stand, but it's one of the parts of the jobs that I really find fulfilling uh, because as a neuropsychologist, you're very unique. It's a subspecialty of psychology and it deals more with functional abilities with hard data. It's not a lot of subjective information. When you're called on to testify, you have data to rely on to make your conclusions and to make your recommendations from. It's not, a, it's not as much of a guessing game because we're using information to localize areas of strength and weakness within the brain and you have a hard number to point to and say, this is why I think this. Um, one of the I guess worst, if you want to call it the worst parts of the job, can sometimes be the forensic testimony because you end up spending a whole day in court instead of spending a whole day with patients. Um, sometimes those things can be stressful, uh, trying to balance work and family when, you, when you're working 60, 70 hours a week sometimes is, is challenging, but I get a lot of enjoyment out of working with families and, and patients directly, and nine times out of ten, I'm providing them with a useful evaluation that nobody else medically or psychologically has ever been able to provide them with. And patients, like myself also, enjoy having hard data to look at. It's not subjective, it's objective. So if you're thinking seriously about a career in neuropsychology, the best advice I can give you is to find a local neuropsychologist ask if you can shadow for a day, find out if they have any openings for an assistant. That's how I got my foot in the door. And to be honest, I didn't even know what neuropsychology was when I started working in it. It was a perfect fit for me because I'm detail oriented, I like hard data, and I like working with people. So neuropsychology really was a perfect fit for me. If you're interested in the brain and if you're interested in learning more about why people do the things they do, neuropsychology is a really good choice. On the flip side, if you don't like standardized testing, if you don't like manualized procedures, then this is probably not the field for you. Uh, this is not all about emotions. This is not lay down on the couch and tell me about your mother. This is look at this diagram and have your patient recreate it using blocks or colored pencils. This is listen to this long list of information and repeat it back. This is all about being precise in how you ask questions. And for some people that like to be, you know, like to think on their feet or like to think outside the box, this kind of work can really be draining and too tedious for them. So neuropsychology for me, it's perfect. It offers me a wide variety of opportunities, but it's not the right fit for everyone.